Have you ever been to the supermarket and realised you can buy a bunch of basil or a whole basil plant for pretty much the same price? You start to imagine having fresh basil at your fingertips all year round. Then you get home and you put your new basil plant on your windowsill, but before you can even boil a pot of pasta, it's wilted, shriveled or left this world completely. Well, don't feel too bad because it wasn't completely your fault. It was also the basil. You see, not every plant can grow in every place, and it's all down to its DNA. You see, a plant's DNA holds the clues as to whether or not it's adaptable enough to survive in its changing environment. This includes whether the plant is resilient enough to cope with what the environment throws at it a harsh climate, disease, or bugs. Plants have predators too. These pressures and dangers can even push a plant species to extinction. And that can have a massive domino effect on the whole ecosystem. But scientists at the Australian Institute of Botanical Science are actually using DNA technology to not only ensure that our native plant life isn't at risk of extinction, but to reintroduce threatened species as well. One of the scientists at the forefront of this cutting-edge technology is Dr Maurizio Rossetto, and I had a chat with him about plants and their DNA. What exactly is DNA and, I mean, what can it tell you about a plant in particular? Well, DNA is really the blueprint, the inherited blueprint of how we made, what we are, what we do, how we are adapted, how do we respond to the environmental conditions that surround us. And it's really important for us to understand about DNA and understand about genetics, which is the process through which DNA is inherited within populations, because it can help us understand the history, the dynamics, the overall fitness of species, mm -hmm. and their adaptive potential. Once we understand all the things, then we're in a much, much better position to manage, conserve, and look after biodiversity. And then this DNA blueprint, essentially, how do you explore it and what exactly are you looking for? There's many different ways to look at DNA. The more complex way is to look at the genome, where we can look at the single genes and try to understand what kind of adaptation do they convey. The way that we generally use genetics and genetic data is to try to understand the distribution of diversity across populations, how adaptations are distributed across the landscape. By understanding these kind of factors, these kind of processes, and reading those genetic signatures, we can then make better decisions about management of species, management of population, conservation of rare species, and really about the distribution of biodiversity in general across the landscape. One such species being reintroduced using DNA technology and cutting edge science is the famous Wollamai pine. Up until recently, this tree species with a lineage dating back to the time of the dinosaurs was thought to be extinct for about 2 million years. But in 1994, a National Parks and Wildlife Ranger by the name of David Noble stumbled upon a population of these towering trees growing deep in a canyon in the Blue Mountains west of Sydney. The Wollamai pine is critically endangered with only around 140 trees growing in the wild and their location is kept top secret to ensure they stay protected. Even if you did find one, you could be liable for a $220,000 fine and two years in prison if you damaged it. To bring this precious pine back from the brink, scientists are mapping its DNA to unlock crucial information about how it reached such critical levels and what we might need to avoid or implement when we reintroduce it into new habitats. Because like with your basil plant at home, some plants are hardwired to thrive in some locations, but not others. Some of this may sound like common sense. Any occasional gardener will tell you that you've got no business planting a daffodil in a desert. But when we look at repopulating entire landscapes, it gets more complicated. Take the 2019-2020 bushfire season. It ravaged the country and destroyed the habitats of our beloved native animals. We're now in the process of recovering over 20% of Australia's bushland. While we know that nature is resilient, 
we can also give it a helping hand. This is where the vital work of scientists at the Australian Institute of Botanical Science comes in again. How can you use DNA technology and research to help with restoration projects to rehabilitate a landscape? That's an excellent question because it's really critical to ensure that restored populations have maximum diversity to make sure that they are self-sustaining and they will live in the long term. And so we are currently running a very large project, the Restore and Renew project, where we collect genetic and environmental data across the entire distribution of hundreds of species. And then we inform the practitioners through a freely available web tool where to access this information in order to ensure exactly the points that we talked about before, that is ensuring maximum diversity and ensuring future proofing climate adaptation. Scientists are using genetic information to regenerate the landscape in a way that ensures nature will not only bounce back, but thrive. With climate change and forest shrinking, DNA sequencing our plant life is going to help us give it the best possible chance of sticking around for generations to come. You can help scientists restore healthy and resilient habitats by donating to the Australian Institute of Botanical Science. You can even support our native plant life for the price of your next bunch of basil. Fight for our flora and make an impact. Go to botanicgardens.org.au slash donate to help protect our plants and our future.